Hello and welcome What The Finance is to another episode of the What The Finance podcast, where we talk to experts to help gain a greater understanding about what is happening in the world of finance, investing mar- and markets. On today's podcast, I'm happy to welcome Rafi Farber, who's uh, from the Endgame Investor. So Rafi, thanks for joining the podcast today. Thanks for having me, Anthony. Good to be on a new show. You're welcome. I'm really looking forward to uh, talking to you. So my first question, sort of in your opinion, what is currently wrong with our monetary system? <laughs> Uh, okay. the, most basic, <laughs> the, the most basic answer to that question is that it is based on theft. The, the whole thing revolves around stealing. Um, and while society can tolerate, can handle thieves and, and, uh, and robbers, it, those occur in every society. <clears throat> we have laws to, you know, limit their activity, uh, corral them, put them in prison, make them pay back for their crimes. But a society that's based on theft itself cannot survive. It eventually will collapse and rebuild itself into something else, hopefully something that is not based on theft. Mm. Um, <clears throat> this uh, actually, um, I mentioned, we, you know, I meant, we were talking earlier that uh, I, I also do biblical commentary into these things. And uh, while this isn't exactly biblical, there's a book behind me um, by uh, a guy named Rabbi Sajid Gaon, who was writing in around 800 of the Common Era. <clears throat> the late middle late in the late dark ages and he asked the basic question why does why does the bible pro- prohibit us from stealing what's the point like why can't we just steal okay so he says because if you have a society that's based on stealing eventually you run out of things and then everybody dies because <laughs> then nobody produces anything if you can just steal it why produce it and then you run out of stuff to steal and then that's it it's over <clears throat> we've seen this time and time again in every communist society which is based on theft and how is, how is our monetary system based on theft? That's the main question. <clears throat> well, um, when, you, uh, when you print money into existence, really a money substitute, and you have the ability to uh, claim real goods and services on that thing that you just invent out of nothing, then you're basically stealing stuff from producers and producing nothing in return. That's stealing. Uh, you know, couch it in whatever academic terms you want. We've seen we've seen outright theft couch in academic academic terms in worse and worse ways. You know, especially in the last three or four years, um, even people trying to justify like Black Lives Matter looting in term in academic terms, it's the same thing. But inflation, the system of inflation, is based on theft, and that will collapse society. Uh, real, but again, this this is an important point though <clears throat> that. So inflation is not money. Inflation is a money substitute. When you when you print stuff, uh, it always goes back into the past based on a money, a pre-existing money, right? That pre-existing money is gold and silver. So when you are spending a dollar, you're not spending really a dollar. You're spending the gold value of that dollar. And the more dollars you print, the more inflated that gold dollar that gold value becomes, and eventually it turns to zero, and that's hyperinflation. So they can create money substitutes and, and spend them into existence through theft. And that's the problem. The, the middle class and the, the lower middle class has less and less. And the, 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 the classes that benefit from inflation because they're close to the money printers, they get more and more. And you have this lopsided uh, inequality that's due to theft, not due to not enough regulation, due to theft. And then eventually the peasants revolt and you have a societal collapse. That's what's going to happen. Interesting. So you say the theft is sort of inflation as well as, I guess, interest, interest payments on money. Is that sort of? No, no. Interest no? payments on money is not theft. No, no. That, that's that's an that's just an agreement. If you go into debt, you pay interest. That's fine. Yeah. Um, the pro- the problem is when when you claim a monopoly on a money substitute and no other substitute can be used, and then you can print that thing and buy stuff with it and take stuff away from people without adding into the economy first, without producing first. That is theft. Um, it wouldn't be so much of a problem if the government or, or uh, allowed other money printers to be in the market and then they would say our our money substitute is basically a stand in for gold and silver we have in our basement come and check and then you can use the Federal Reserve note if you want, uh, or you can use ours and eventually the, the, val- the, the, the best money the most honest money would win just like in any business, the most on the most honest and the, the best quality product of whatever you're selling, even if it's a money which is a product. Uh, will win. Yeah, cheaters will get away with it sometimes, and you know, but eventually they fall. I mean, we just saw that with FTX. Everything, all cheaters eventually fail. Yeah, because that would be like going back before the US dollar, where they had sort of each bank had their own sort of credit notes, and then. But I guess there was the risk that, as you said, 
it, it might not be as much now because there's more transparency into things as you know it's it more we're more connected but there was the risk that if the bank collapsed and you lose all your money so then there's not that incentive to put money in the bank if that makes sense well that, that's what's going to happen now i mean the, there's yep. no incentive to keep deposits in a bank because uh price inflation and um and you know we're, we're already seeing the set when it's the same thing in the current system when the central bank fails everyone with dollars loses everything that that's what's going to happen and unless you have real money gold and silver then you're, you're going to lose everything uh, and you're going to be left with whatever real assets you have because your paper assets are going to go to nothing and how does the central bank fail is it just the fact that they're sort of caught between we look at the moment there's inflation but at the same time the economy's crashing so they're trying to balance that and is it just that they don't do the right thing and then inflation continues to go up and then they lose control there, there is no there is no right thing there's no there's nothing right that they can do they can try to balance a system of theft for as long as possible but eventually it collapses um once it, once you start once you start printing money substitutes over your gold supply then it the people that receive that money grow and grow and then they become dependent and then you have to give them more and more and uh, then the things that they grow become dependent and then you can't let anything fall. The pyramid just keeps getting bigger and bigger until the whole thing collapses. So there, there is no right thing that they can do. They should not exist. Um, th this is not how a society need, should be run, which is again, based on theft. A central bank manages theft, uh, which is any, any Ponzi scheme manages theft. So uh, like a, it's a basic Ponzi scheme is when you, when you pay off your exist your your existing creditors with new creditors, you know it, that's that's what's ha and that's what the central bank does. That's what all Ponzi schemes do. And then the 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 federal government feeds off of that by selling bonds to pay off its old bond. Everything is a Ponzi scheme within a Ponzi scheme, and the biggest Ponzi scheme itself is the U.S. dollar. And when the, when uh, the the dollar can no longer be exchanged for any amount of gold, that is the I guess the definition of hyperinflation, because uh, the money is still gold, because all prices have to go into the past. You can't just invent a fiat money out of nothing. The any fiat any fiat we call fiat money has to be indexed to a to an existing price array, otherwise it's meaningless. Uh, so everything chains back into the past, and the original global money was gold because it was just the best material to do that with and it still is yeah really interesting so do you I mean, from what you're saying you see there being a collapse in the current system do you sort of think that would happen in a few years do you think we're getting to the late stage what's your opinion on that uh i can't give an exact answer on timing but what i can what i can say is that <clears throat> i i think the ultimate collapse in terms of the dollar uh, going either to absolute zero or returning to a fixed exchange rate with gold, um, that will happen after the next round of money printing. Meaning 20, 2008 was the, was the uh, you know, let's say the second to last stage and then all the QEs involved in that. And then you had the COVID printing, um, not really the COVID printing, it was the lockdown printing. COVID really had nothing to do with it. It was all the lockdown printing. Uh, and then they're 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 now uh, trying to control their pyramid from growing too fast enough, so they're raising interest rates and trying to keep the rate a little lower. But that's going to create another collapse, uh, and another pyramid is going to fall. It could be Credit Suisse, it could be any bank in Europe that starts it, because all these banks are stuffed with multi-trillion dollars of derivatives that they have to be bailed out because they will collapse the pyramid if, if they're allowed to fail. Uh, it'll lead to another round of printing, and after that. I think it'll be done within a matter of weeks to months. Uh, it's going to happen very fast when it starts. Um, I mean, how long did it take for, for FTX to fall? After a single tweet by Binance, I think it was, that started a bank run. It was like two or three days, something like that, maybe a week. Uh, I don't know if it'll be that fast. I think it'll be weeks to months once it starts. And once in, in, when it starts, everyone will know. Everyone's going to know. It's going to be obvious. Yeah, so it'll be like a layman of our, of our time, basically. Yeah. It could be this year. Yeah, well, if you look at sort of the stock, and I guess there's so many withdrawals, as you said, there's there's a real concern that the bank is insolvent, basically, that they've made all these bets, they've lost all this money. They, they You know, why would you keep your money in that bank if you could just go somewhere else and be a bit more secure? 
You're talking about Credit Suisse or, yeah. or the federal? Okay. Credit well, Suisse and maybe Deutsche yeah. Bank as well. I know there's there's concern about them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, Credit Suisse, it's, it's the same situation with all banks. All, all banks were basically forced to bet on lower and lower interest rates. So I think Credit Suisse is like $8.1 trillion of interest rate swaps that it's done with uh, with other parties and who knows who they are. Uh, and that's basically other, an interest rate swap is when you when you agree to swap a floating rate for fixed rate. So when, <clears throat> when interest rates rise, the value of those swaps go down and the bank has to pay more and more uh, because the, their counterparty is, is paying a fixed interest rate. And now the bank is paying the, the floating rate, which is going higher and higher. So they're losing money. Uh, but in a, in a in a in an environment where the central bank is constantly lowering interest rates, it's always a winning bet until they stop. So they're they're always caught at the end of these things with a whole bunch of credit derivative paper that is going down in value, and that creates the the bust for all the banks. And then they have to start another round of printing again so that they don't collapse. So they'll start another round of printing, and nominally the banks will be fine, but they'll be trading around worthless dollars and worthless euros and worthless yen and all the other stuff that's worthless, and then. It doesn't matter what they do because they won't have any real value in them anymore. Yeah, interesting. And and so I guess a lot of people have been talking about this in 2008, 2018, maybe even 2020. Do you think it just come it just culminated in the time, or do you think it, could they continue the print and there won't be an issue with inflation, or you don't see that possible? Well, it printing is inflation. You're talking about having an issue with rising consumer prices, or basically an issue with um the consumers realizing what's happening and getting out in front of the central bank theft and dumping the currency. Is that going to happen? Absolutely. It's going to happen. That happens at the end of every cycle. It's, it's an inevitability. It's not something that can be avoided. Once you start, basically, once you start taking drugs, you're going to overdose and it, either that, or you're going to go through withdrawal and you're going to radically change your life and, uh, and stop being a junkie. And the, look, the, there's no other way out of it. There's not, you can't just, continue using higher and higher doses of drugs and then have one of those two outcomes not happen it's impossible so not i'm not saying that if if the collapse is going to happen it's definitely 100 percent going to happen and it's going to happen in our lifetimes uh, and i think it's going to happen after the next round of printing and we know that that's coming because that always comes it always comes yeah, I think that's a great way I look at it. And how, how I look at it is like, it's almost like caffeine. Like if anyone drinks coffee, like when you first have it, you're like, oh, this is amazing. I feel great. But then yeah. you just become more, you know, you get used to it and then it doesn't work as well. So you have to have more caffeine. And then, you know, it could get to the point where you're having it and you just have no idea what the, con like what's happening, basically nothing happening. So they're printing all this money, they're injecting it into the economy. Nothing's happening. And as you said, they're just inflating and then it will get this, well, they're already inflating, but then will the US dollar and other currencies will become worthless. Yeah. Yep. So you mentioned there that we could see sort of a suppression with 2.0. Do you see any other systems? Do you think it, you know gold will be really where the value lies in the end? Um, I don't believe in any system. There shouldn't be systems. Uh, there, there should be freedom. There should be liberty that people organize in the best way in the in the way that the market wants. Um, look, in the in in the end, all the, the 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 current pyramid, the base of it is is gold and silver. The, the, there's a, this is why I'm not so worried about central bank digital currencies because you can't create a new pyramid by making the current pyramid bigger. Like what would like just imagine what a central bank digital currency would be? And I know they're terrifying, and I get that, and I, I don't dispute that at all. I, they are terrifying. Um, but how would you actually implement them? You would say, okay, CBDC is now the thing. This is how you transact, and each CBDC we're going to peg it one to one to each dollar. Okay, but what is that? That means that they're they're building on top of the current dollar system. It doesn't. They're not creating a new pyramid. They're just building another layer. So it, that collapses too. Uh, the question is: Is the current pyramid going to collapse before they add another layer, or is it, or, or are they going to be able to add the CBDC layer for I don't know a few months or whatever it is, and and then it'll collapse. Either way, it doesn't make much of a difference because once it collapses, once the dollar is worthless, the CBDC is worthless, and they can tell you to. To transact only in CBDCs, but you can't buy anything with it. So what are you going to do? Just voluntarily starve to death? No. You, the, the government can no longer pay their workers, and uh, and they revolt, and everything revolts, and then the Tower of Babel collapses. That's what's going to happen. And I'm not so worried about the CBDC. Uh, so the, the, the system I envision 
is just liberty. Just like let people exchange things for other things and however it develops, it develops. Just stop trying. We got to stop thinking in terms of these central planners, like what system do I think would, you know, keep the pyramid lasting for, no, none of that. Just forget it. Just let people trade. Yeah, interesting. And in your opinion, gold and precious metals will be valuable, I guess. If I'm not making, I'm not making like a, an empirical guess here. I'm saying that logically right now, right today, when you're going to a store and you're buying something, you are exchanging gold or silver for that thing with a gold and silver substitute. Logically, that must be the case because you cannot invent a money out of, no, out of, out of no previous base. It always has to be indexed to the past. And how is all of our monetary systems indexed to? They're all indexed to gold and silver because that's how they came into existence, right? They were originally, they were originally uh, uh, receipts for gold and silver hidden in some basement in some bank somewhere, which means that they still are. It just happens to be that the, the gold, the gold, not really the silver now, the gold is now in the, the, the basements of the central banks that issue the currencies. It's the same thing. So I'm not saying that gold will have value. I'm saying it will, it always, it is money now and it's going to be money when the money substitutes for them currently fall. But when you think about it, Everyone has money substitutes. Everyone has some amount of money substitutes, whether they're pounds or dollars or euros, whatever, they have them. But when they are worthless, then what do they have? They have their real assets. And what is the real asset that is the most monetary? It is gold and silver. So those people will have the most purchasing power. And they, by having the most purchasing power, they will be coaxed to relinquish it, to exchange it for goods and services. And therefore, you'll have a circulating money again. Uh, and then uh, you can rebuild based on that. You can't rebuild based on CBDC. Does this risk sort of economic growth or you think that's a made up number that isn't really relevant? Economic growth is irrelevant. Like some, some people grow, some people shrink. Some people make money, some people lose money. Like what, what are, why are we busy, you know, tabulating all these numbers of what, what, what is even, what, what's growing? Like what, like, uh, uh, you know, if you're, if you're uh, let's say a multimillionaire and then you decide like you can't stand your life and you're drinking too much and you're doing too much Coke or whatever it is that you're doing. And, you know, uh, you're just being irresponsible, eating too much. You just want to become an ascetic monk somewhere in Bangladesh. And now you're much happier. Well, did you grow or did you shrink? Well, you know, GDP wise, you shrunk, but maybe your, your life is much happier now, even though you consume less. So you grew like growth is basically the government saying, oh, how much of our money substitutes, how much of our pounds and dollars and we're exchanged in a given amount of time? Who cares? Like, what does that have to do with anything? If you print more money, there's going to be more money units flying around everywhere. What does that mean? Nothing. Yeah, well, I definitely agree with what you're saying. It's all based on credit and the credit that we've been creating over the past 40, 50, 60 years. Um yeah. So I've heard you talk a lot about silver as well. And the fact that, you know, at the moment, I guess the gold silver ratio is quite, quite extreme but compared to where it's been in the past. Do you sort of have any opinions out? Do you think that's going to maybe uh, tighten up in the future or? Um, well, the, the gold to silver ratio. Well, the, um, the initial um, before gold, before gold was the main money, it was, it was silver. And why? Because, uh, because gold, you can't go in with a gold coin and buy food at a supermarket. It's it's not it, it's too valuable. Like you can't divide it small enough to get retail amounts. So the ultimate gold substitute is really silver because silver can buy things in retail amounts. Uh, the, the thing is like once you have a functioning gold substitute, let's say it's a piece of paper that says dollar on it, and that equals let's say back in 1970 or one thirty fifth of an ounce of gold or whatever it was, then you could use that as your silver uh, instead of silver to buy things with. And what's more convenient, a gold substitute that's made out of paper, that's honest, uh, that is backed one-to-one -one, or a silver coin. Well, the paper is better because it's easier and it's more accountable and it doesn't like, you know, it doesn't wear down, right? It, a paper dollar is a paper dollar or a paper pound or whatever, five pound note, you know. Uh, so when there is a function in gold substitute, there's no need for silver. So the value of silver goes way down. But imagine a world where there is no functioning gold substitute anymore because nobody trusts the currencies. So what are you going to do? How are you going to buy retail amounts of stuff? You have to use coins. You have to use silver coins. So in that in that time frame, 
after the collapse of the gold substitutes, chiefly the dollar, and then everything else will fall too. Uh, there's going to be a time when there's nothing to use but silver coins to buy retail amounts of whatever it is. Uh, and at that time, historically, we've seen it before. We saw it in 1918. We saw it in 1980 when the gold to silver ratio returned to between 15 and 16 to 1, which was for hundreds, even thousands of years, the monetary ratio of gold to silver. It was, uh, it was always around 15 to 1, maybe 20, 25 to 1 in that range for thousands of years. And it's happened twice in modern history, 1918, 1980. Why wouldn't it happen again? Of course, it'll happen again. It'll go down to around 15 to one. And that's when there is no function in gold substitute and nothing else can be trusted. Uh, then people will use silver coins to buy their stuff. So that's what's going to happen. Um, how long will that last is the question. It'll last until a function in gold substitute can be reintroduced into the monetary system. How long will that take? I don't know, weeks, months. So you're not gonna have that much time. So when you have that ratio, Use your coins, buy some stuff. Yeah, super interesting. So when this monetary system collapses, you've mentioned gold, silver. Is, is that sort of how you've positioned your portfolio at the moment and how you're looking to protect your wealth? Is it like sort of investing in like a silver mines as well or other equities or other assets? What's What are you doing in that regard? Yeah, well, the the for safety, um, gold bullion, um, I don't really believe in the ETFs, but there are there are less bad and more bad and there are bad and worse ETFs. Um, so uh, in terms of silver, that is important to have uh, silver coins with you somewhere where, you know, after the collapse happens, you can go out and buy stuff. Uh, and yeah, gold and silver miners, um, those are also important because not, not because of whatever their dollar value will be. You could say, oh, they have just a dollar value attached to their stocks. And so what are they gonna be worth? Well. I don't really care about the dollar value. I want a piece of the company because companies can pay in dividends. And when there is no longer any functioning uh, dollar or pound, then what are you going to pay dividends in? Well, you'll pay dividends in product. So they could give me a certificate of a certain percentage of their production. And that would be worth that. That would be worth trading. Uh, so, um, or maybe they'd mail it to me. I don't know. I haven't really worked that out and it's not really my business to it's, uh, it's up to them. And um, that's more speculative. Uh, also, energy companies, uh, you know, the energy sector, things that things that people will need to survive, basically, is what I'm doing. Uh, food stocks, um, food producers, that sort of thing. Yeah, interesting. So, as you said, anyone that produces these real assets that are will be valuable in the future. Yeah. Awesome. And do you manufacturing as well? Or is that not something that you're really interested? That's in? not. I'm not really an expert in that. And manufacturing is. Um, is more towards the top of the production structure, meaning it's it's more uh, capital intensive. So they tend to be more affected by the business cycle and you don't know what's gonna happen to their stock price. I just know that gold and silver miners, uh, they will be valuable as pieces of companies that produce real money with which you can buy goods and services. That's my basic uh, basic accounting. Yeah, and is that just uh, in all the different geographies or is mainly sort of North America or? Well, I, 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 there's no one geography that I trust. Um, you know, it, it, it did happen that, uh, that, uh, the SEC basically confiscated, uh, Russian ETFs and, uh, and, and gutted them. So, uh, you gotta be careful about that and you don't want to invest in countries that are, you know, declared enemies of the state where you're trading in, um, just for political reasons. Uh, but the, you know, Af Africa, people are afraid of Africa. They're afraid of like warlords taking over, but warlords are going to take over everywhere. <laughs> so um, yeah, just do your best, spread them out and look for, uh, look for responsible companies that are managing their finance as well. Uh, or you can sign up to the Endgame Investor and see what I'm doing. Yeah, awesome. So that sounds great. So Rafi, th thanks so much for your time today. Um, my last question is, what is one message you want people to take away from our conversation relax everything will be fine <laughs> that easy <laughs> yeah. awesome yeah so thank you so much so we've, you've, we mentioned the end game investor uh, is there anywhere else people, people can find your work yeah um you type in on any search engine end game investor it's through seeking alpha uh you can follow me on youtube my channel is rafi farber r-a-f-i-f-a-r-b-e-r uh, and uh, you can join my patron, my Patreon, 
become a patron for as little as $3 a month, where I give a more biblical perspective on these issues, um, what sort of the Old Testament says about uh, economic and monetary policy, and it says a lot, you'd be surprised. Um, yeah, that's how you can follow me. Awesome. I'll put that all in the description below, but Rafi, thanks again. Great. Great. Thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed the episode, please subscribe and click the bell icon so you are notified when new podcasts are released. I hope you're leaving with some great value about investing, trading, and finance. See you on the next show.